Hey, Voices of Distilling listeners. Let's talk about a little something that's at the core of every distillery. I'm talking about yeast. Not just any yeast. I'm talking about the brand of yeast from AB Biotech, Pinnacle Distiller's Yeast. Now, you and I both know that yeast is the unsung hero of distilling. It's not just about science. They believe in being partners in fermentation. They've got expertise across the board. Whether you're all about wine, a beer enthusiast, or like us, a fanatic for distilled spirits, higher, they're part of the story your distillery is writing, part of the community that is pushing for the best and always eager to help you reach new heights with solutions and technical services that you need. So why settle for just any yeast when you can ferment with the best? Elevate your distilling game. Make Pinnacle Distillers Yeast your partner in fermentation today. From the heart of America to the corners of the globe, welcome to Voices of Distilling, powered by the American Distilling Institute. Unearth the stories, the passion, and the faces behind every drop. Dive deep into the world where tradition meets innovation with me, your host, Ron L. Richards. Let's tap into the spirit of distilling where every voice is unique, but the heart remains the same. Let the journey begin. Welcome back to Voices of Distilling. I am your host, Ron L. Richards, and today I am joined by Chris Patrick of South Puget Sound Community College. And I'm stoked to have this conversation with you because you guys are doing such fun things over there. Now, before we get into this, Chris, I hmm. always start with a little known distilling fact. Okay. Most little, all of them are little known to me. You may know this, but little known distilling fact. I want to check your <clears throat> uh, check check your knowledge. Okay. Okay. So sir. your fact. Oh, okay. This is a good one. <laughs> How about this? Okay. Did you know many of the distillation techniques used today were refined by alchemists of the Middle Ages who sought to turn base metals into gold and search for the elixir of life? Did you know this? No, I did not. Yes. Sir. That's All excellent. Right. I got you. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's well, pretty good. You, learned, you didn't expect to come, come on the show and learn something like I that. I did right? not, especially with a chemistry background. Oh, so, what? Yep. Okay, you shouldn't have said that. I agree, right? Okay. <laughs> I put in shame the Northeastern like... University who gave me a bachelor's in chemistry, which I feel very proud of, Yeah. but I did not know that Now history. you just devalued that bachelor's I, in, in chemistry. It's a right? private institution. I think they're doing okay. Okay, okay, so, okay. Well, but, it's it's a pleasure to have you. Thank um, you, sir. And um, so you're serving as the assistant director of, yes. of the uh, craft brewing and, and distilling program there at, at SPSCC. Yes. And we always start with just talking about your distilling story. And so I'm really interested to know about your story. How did you get into this business? Oh my. So I've already mentioned Northeastern University, but the love of chemistry came from there. Mm -hmm. So I got my bachelor's degree from them in 2018 in Massachusetts and moved out to Washington State with my wife, where I began my brewing career. And I've been commercially brewing for the past five years. And I was given the opportunity to work for South Puget Sound in February of this year. Okay. And that is where my distilling story officially begins. Nice. Oh, yes. Okay. So just got into the pool. How does it feel? It is tepid, but I'm excited to dive in because this is my first real experience with the industry itself. So I'm diving in head first okay. as soon as I can. Went to the Whiskey Summit on Tuesday and drank up as much information as I could. Yeah. I'm excited. So what, what was that experience like? Because this is your first time at mm -hmm. an ADI conference, right? Yes, sir. And and for those of you that don't know, we are live here at ADI 20. This is the 20th anniversary of ADI and uh, really an amazing conference, mm -hmm. a great time. So tell me what your experience was like at the summit. It was beautiful. Walking in at 9 a.m., the first information that they purveyed was brand new to me. Mm -hmm. And coming from that chemistry background, I really like seeing, okay, the water profiles, how are they changing when we're downproofing? How is that changing the overall product that we're creating? Yeah. And that's what I really care about. I like those flavors and how we're portraying that to the customer, mm -hmm. right? We're making those fine details so the mouthfeel is changing, mm -hmm. the minerality is changing, and it's those tweaks that are really engaging to me. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the tasting is nice, but I'm still building up to that, if okay. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was very informative. Yeah. It's nice. Love it. So, so now this is, 
This is the second or consecutive appearance from your institution here. Uh, oh, second time you guys, nice. yeah, yeah. So you guys were here last year, so it's great to see you guys back. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about what you what you're doing mm -hmm. at um, at SPSCC because you guys are doing something I think is a little bit different and innovative yes. as it relates to educating future brewers and distillers. Can we talk about that? Oh, of course. As a community college in Olympia, Washington, I feel like we have a unique institution and program where it's craft brewing, craft distilling, and craft cider, all for an associate's degree when you step in the door. We are a community college, so we're open door admissions. We do placement exams that are on your own time. So for those people who feel like, oh, okay, I've been out in the field for 10 years and I'm not in that career, I don't have the math skills, no, no, no. Come in and we'll teach you everything you need to know, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna give you that hands-on learning, we're gonna teach you how to distill, we're going to teach you the fermentation science. And I really love being able to have that one on one with the students of like, why does this beer, why does this spirit taste this way? And it's like, well, in my experience, I've learned these two, three things. And now we're going to go back and change that. And then we learn together because as much as I might know about brewing and I'm still learning about distilling, I can learn from the students and how they view them as well. Mm. And I like that aspect the most. So, you know, um, what, what I know about your program that mm. really interests me, um, like we are the community, we're the heartbeat of the, of the distilling community, yes, which sir. is why you're here. You're, you're, Thank you. you're getting involved in distilling and like this is the place to be. Mm. But, you know, one of the things I've learned about our, our, our community is that our community mm. is so passionate. It's like yes. it's passion that's led them mm -hmm. into distilling, right? Yes. But sometimes what they're missing is that business acumen. Yes. Learning, learning about marketing the product, learning mm -hmm. about you know, how to take that passion and really create a business out of it. Mm -hmm. And I understand that in your program, that's what you guys are kind of helping your, your students with. I'm very happy you brought that up. We have the unique opportunity that we're standing up a Bachelor's of Applied Science next year. Mm. So we have our applied, uh, we have associates in applied science transfer degree that covers craft brewing, distilling, or craft cider. And we are happy to stand up a craft beverage management and quality assurance bachelors of applied science next year. Okay. So while our associates does kind of like dabble, we bring in industry folks who have started their own businesses, who know the operations and the marketing, and we have them teach one, two, three classes on the associates, but the bachelors is really where we're gonna be like, okay, What's your business plan? Mm -hmm. What are the gritty details? Here are the regulations you need to follow in the state and the federal levels. And it really kind of gives that deep dive for them mm -hmm. so that they walk away confident. Love it. Yes. So, so um, okay, your first ADI conference and mm -hmm. you chose an, a, a banger to come to. What are you oh, yeah. most What are you most excited about for the next, <laughs> or, well, for today? Today's going to be a massive day. Oh, my. Uh, First thing I'm looking forward to is the awards luncheon. Mm -hmm. I'd really like to see, okay, who's got the top spots so that I can go out there and kind of taste those and kind of compare to what the judges have, right? Yeah. Because that's what I did with beer. You want to see who's in the top, who's doing well with what. And honestly, I'd like to learn more of the styles. Yeah. So I'm here to learn and expand my sensory uh, perceptions in the spirit realm. Today. So one of the things that you'll learn through your experience today is mm -hmm. that this community is so welcoming. So like, yes, sir. you know, there are very few inter industries where you can have access to the big dogs. Like you're going to go to the awards mm -hmm. uh, luncheon and you're going to see people that are a big deal in this industry. Oh right? yeah. And they are open. They're willing mm -hmm. to help. They're willing to, to give you advice. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, that's one of the things that's beautiful about this, this community. And, 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 um, and I think that you'll see that today. Mm -hmm. All right. So, now we're going to move into something that I like to call a little rapid fire Q&A. OK, so. All right. Yeah. I'm going to ask you some random questions. <laughs> and, Excellent. And you got to give me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. That's clean. Oh, unless of course. <laughs> we're being recorded, right? Yeah. Well, you, you know, OK. <laughs> All right. Um, OK, here we go. OK. The first one for you, mm -hmm. Chris, so. what's your desert island Beer or spirit? I usually say just spirit, but you got the brewing background. There's also beer, beer, spirit. What's your desert island? Desert island beer? Yes. Is going to be like a German style Bach. Ah. 
something that's smooth but complex. Okay. Right? I can keep going back to it when I get tired of it, yeah. give it a little break, and then I come back and I'll find another aspect of that complexity to go to. Okay. Right? Spirits would have to be something botanical. Something botanical. Something complex. Like a gin? I love gins, right? I like spice rums. Mm -hmm. So I've been introducing myself to more and more. So I would say it would have to be a spice rum as cliche as that may be. Okay. But I mean, I feel like <laughs> that's what I love to drink on a desert you're on, island. You're on the desert island drinking spice yes, rum. Sir. Okay. Just drop a box off and I'm set. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. One more question for you. Let's yes, see. Sir. Hmm. You're more of a, you like botanicals. So are you, you a gin? You're, oh, yes. You prefer, okay. I drink gin. Okay. So sir. what, what's your go-to garnish for a gin and tonic? Oh, I would say a lemon slice. I want to bring out that coriander a yeah. little bit more and kind of help that pop. It is, you know, in in there so i would say a lemon slice i like that yeah that's classic citrus okay. is my like good base flavor so um talk to me about what because you're, you're in the um kind of in the midst of change and evolution at mm -hmm. your, your your institution so tell me what's next for you guys what does the future look like Ooh. um here in this like you're you're getting in right and you've you just got into the role and yep. you're jumping into the pool what's happening in 2024 for you and ooh, i'll ask you really one exciting. more question of course what do you think is the future for education in our industry okay i'll tackle the 2024 question first i am very excited to get a better hands-on for our in-person weekends for our instructional program mm -hmm. and in addition to that we are standing up our Percival Creek brands as well. So we are setting up a commercial side and I'm very excited for that. Oh, fun. I get to flex my kind of brewing uh, skills and kind of do some recipe development over there. And then I get to share that with the students and kind of teach them what I know. So I'm looking forward to that. Fun. And then where is education going from here? I would say I like having it at the community college because it's very personable, right? We have classes of 20 when we're on the floor. Mm -hmm. So our cohort is no more than 20 people per one in instructor. So we're pulling that instructor, say we're taking him from Finn River Cidery, right? Up in Port Townsend, Washington. He is making that drive all the way down once a month to come and give us eight to 16 hours of his weekend and really get in depth about cider, teaching him all the aspects of it. So I feel like that individual touch is a good way to draw more people in because I feel like there's mystique behind the beer, the spirits, and the cider, and we need to kind of brush it aside a little bit to let people know, like, no, no, the science is scary, but the fermentation is beautiful, mm. and the end, like, the end result is even better. So I, I like that your your cohorts, as you said, are, as you said, are, are, are super intimate. So they're like mm -hmm. 20 people. Yes, sir. Oh, that's fun. And these yeah. are people from, like, regionally across All the country. Okay. We accept students nationally. All we ask is that you show up one week in a month, three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we are have you in that site doing as much as we can those entire three days. Oh, that's pretty cool. Best example I can give is we're trying to do a big field trip in September. Mm -hmm. So I've set up a cidery tour out in Yakima. We're going to a hop field at CLS Farms. We're trying to get as much exposure for those first year students and really kind of show them like this is what the beverage industry is yeah and show them how tight knit and how collaborative everybody can be what, what do your students usually look like um like what what who, what's it who's everybody. a typical student no there isn't i that would say there is no typical student it's beautiful right because at our community college we have 22 year old students who are just coming in because they think they like beer and spirits and they learn they love the science of it we also have retirees okay. who are mechanical engineers who have already graduated and finished out their careers. So they're like, okay, I wanna make spirits in, the, in my free time, yeah. you know, as research and development, because that's how you're gonna get away with it, right? And it's a smattering all over the place. It's beautiful. Okay, yeah, so. and the reason I asked you that question is that so many people get into our industry mm -hmm. in like mid-career or mid-life mm -hmm. or, or, or seniors, right? Like yep. they've retired and they're like, okay, you know what? 
I want to do something that I'm passionate about, something mm. that I love, you know, and uh, I've, so many of those folks are part of our community. But at the yes. same time, I see the younger folks entering as well. So, yeah, I think that it's important that um, that your, your your school is, you know, inclusive in terms mm-hmm. of understanding where the, um, you know, the different periods of life that people could potentially be in when they're coming. So I think, so thank you for sharing that because I think that again, our members that are interested in, Mm -hmm. in perhaps attending SPSCC, um, the fact that your program is easy for them in terms of, Mm -hmm. um, commit time commitment where they could, they can just fly out for those three days um, and do whatever it is that they do, Mm -hmm. um, virtually is pretty cool. So yes, we try and be innovative as inclusive, right? Because we understand most people are going to be working. Yeah. Right. We can't expect you to completely stop your career, shut down a business and then come in. Right. We want you to continue working at that distillery you're working at or that brewery you're working at and then come to us on that weekend and really build out your knowledge. Right. Because that's the basis of the students that have started our program yeah. so far as industry folks who are trying to bolster themselves. And I feel like my drive now is to kind of scoop in the people who find it interesting but haven't been in the industry yet if that makes sense yes so absolutely yeah well i think that's super cool um as you know adi you know we're the heart of distilling and it's all Mm -hmm. about education innovation and inspiration so education is one of our our just our tenants and we're super big in into educating the community so um i applaud the work that you guys are doing i appreciate um, and helping to continue to evolve our industry so in closing I got one last question for you, and I call this my cool closing question. Cool. Um, what else? Now, you, you already mentioned some 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 really cool stuff that's going on at at, at your um, at your school. But mm. what's something that's cool that you're excited about here, either right now or into uh, the future? Give me something else cool that you're doing or the school's doing. Okay, I'll go with. In the future, I'm very excited that I would like to make bourbon. That's Mm. why I came. I'd like to learn how to make bourbon, how to make good bourbon, and how to make bourbon that's unique to Washington State. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a good future for our program to aspire to. So, and in the meantime, I'm just doing as much research and development as I can in as many areas as I can. Okay. So trying to expand our barrel program and trying to give as much exposure to the students as I can that reflect the industry and what could be in the industry. Love it, so. love it. Chris, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you are not a member of ADI, distilling.com, that is the heart of our digital mm-hmm. community. So go to distilling.com. If you're an existing ADI member, take advantage of all of the wonderful tools that we have out there for oh. helping you to connect. Use the forums. Make sure you're subscribing to all the social channels where we're sharing yeah great education we're sharing inspirational information as well so um every way that you can get involved you should get involved because it's all about our members at the end of the day so Agreed. thank you so much chris and thank you, sir. thank you all for giving us your time thank like you. share comment all that good stuff and we'll see you on our next episode as we conclude another episode of voices of distilling we want to extend our deepest gratitude to you our cherished listeners. Your support is the lifeblood of our show, and we are endlessly thankful for each and every one of you. If you've enjoyed our conversation today, please take a moment to rate and review our podcast. It truly helps others discover these spirited stories. And if you wish to further support our mission, consider becoming a member of the American Distilling Institute. As a member, you'll dive deeper into the world of distilling, gain access to exclusive content, be a part of our dynamic annual conference and immerse yourself in a community where knowledge and passion converge. Visit our website, distilling.com, for more details on how you can benefit from membership and contribute to the vibrant tapestry of distilling. Until our glasses clink again, remember, every drop has a story, every voice a passion. Raise your glass and cheers to the heart of distilling. Distilling.